Michelle, are we recording? Can I go ahead and start? Yes, we're recording. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to your May edition of Resident Forum. I'm Jessica Lopez, your executive director, and uh, I wanted to start with, look, I just switched titles very quickly, didn't I? I was executive director, now I'm this, I'm all over the place. Um, <laughs> first and foremost, um, wanted to give you an update on COVID. Uh, so in Fresno County, we, as of May 16th, because we do not get an update um, for Monday until 4.30 and they are closed on Sunday. So as of May 16th, the total cases of COVID in Fresno County are 1,192. 51 of those are travel related, 494 are close contact, 455 are community spread or unknown, and 192 are under investigation. Total deaths are 16, ever hospitalized 154, 379 have been recovered. Um, as you can see, the total individuals that have been monitored to date by Fresno County Department of Public Health is 2,888. Currently being monitored, 745. They have conducted almost 13,500 tests. So those numbers are going up and is in many counties, worse as the shelter in place guidelines are starting to loosen as predicted, these numbers are starting to grow in correlation with those loosening of restrictions. For San Joaquin Gardens, we have zero positive cases and zero persons under investigations. Again, that's somebody that's typically symptomatic and or being tested for COVID. Year to date, so starting at the beginning of the coronavirus crisis, um, we have had two positive cases. Both individuals have since recovered. We have had 49 PUI cases to date. So I will continue to share both current and cumulative data for tracking purposes. As we look at the, the hottest topic in the news right now, the five stage reopening process, um, Human Good is uh, creating their own uh, reopening process stages. And those will be model modeled by the, both the state and the county. So um, right now we are in uh, stage two um, and uh, we've just entered into stage two. So there is no approximation as to when we'll be moving to stage three at this point. Um, wanted to share the Fresno County shelter in place order. I've been getting many questions about when we will um, open up our salons or our gym or things like that. And what I need to remind folks is there's uh, a lot of oversight for a, a community such as San Joaquin Gardens, but really there's a lot of oversight um, in the country right now. And many counties have shelter in place guidelines in place. As we reside in Fresno County, I thought I'd review this uh, Fresno County shelter in place order. So um, there's 978,000 residents. There's been, as of the time this was reported, 1,192 cases, 16 deaths. Um, the county order is following the state order, which is recommending folks wear face coverings in places such as essential businesses. Um, essential retail are considered grocery stores, pharmacies, banks, and post offices. All retail is closed. Restaurants and bars are closed. Or de and delivery takeout is only acceptable at this time. For recreation, gyms, movie theaters, et cetera, are closed. They've recently reopened golf courses, but gyms are closed. So I can't open a gym up um, when there is this Fresno County shelter in place order. Um, and even if Fresno County switched this tomorrow, we would need to have a plan in action for how we could successfully allow our resident population to go into said gym um, and allow for disinfecting in between uses. As we know, COVID can uh, stay on, on uh, physical um, entities and, and can be picked up through touch. Although a relatively small percentage of cases uh, are acquired that way, it is still um, a, a known way to uh, get COVID. Um, so wanted to review that with all of you as I continue to get requests for um, 
specifically our gym and our salon that um, the salons are actually not considered even in, in phase two. They are looked at in phase three because they are a high touch area. Um, again, our salon is only open for um, hygiene related items at this time for those residential living residents only who cannot physically wash their own hair or cut their own toenails. And um, that is an acceptable use, uh, and the county has deemed that acceptable at this time. I wanted to switch gears and do my traditional resident forum update. So uh, for April 2020, um, you can see there number one residential living had a positive variance of $7,400. Uh, assisted living had a positive variance of $3,000. Um, Memory care uh, was below budget by about 5,300. And as I've been indicating to you, number four there is going to be the biggest driver of our revenue decline, which is our skilled nursing or village healthcare center had a negative variance of $83,000 uh, um, over actually. And that's gonna be directly correlated to the hospitals and the lack of census at hospitals, thereby uh, a lack of census in um, our village health care center. Um, so we will continue to track and trend that closely. As I reported last week, um, this is important to our overall financial viability as an organization, both at San Joaquin Gardens and as Human Good. Um, as uh, this unsheltering starts to occur and hospitals start to resume normal activity, we should see that revenue pick up. Um, right now, uh, Community Hospital is doing 10% of their normal elective surgeries, and St. Agnes is doing 25% of their normal elective surgeries. So uh, we're gonna watch that number quite closely. Other service income had a positive variance of $50,000. That is um, money from the government for uh, offset of COVID relief. So uh, Human Good received funds overall, and a significant portion of that variance came from that um, those COVID relief funds from the government. So that was the first time the government sent us money um, so quickly and readily, and we were appreciative of that. Um, amortization of entrance fees, number six there, had a positive variance of 37,000. That number will start to see um, quickly decline uh, as we don't have a lot of sales activity in the pipeline nor um, entrance fees on the books. So a total positive revenue of 14,234. Again, without that influx of cash from the federal government to offset COVID relief, we would have been negative for revenue for the month. For expenses, um, number one there at the top, total employee cost was under budget, uh, 143,000. The majority of that uh, was us reducing labor in our village healthcare center. That was not the furloughs. Uh, we will not see any um, offset in cost until May for um, those actions we've taken. So that was our um, village healthcare center recognizing the decline in census and being good stewards of their labor management and reducing um, staffing in that arena. Number two, supplies over budget, $28,000. Uh, a lot of that um, is PP&E supplies, which may eventually be recoverable through FEMA, um, but there are no guarantees for that at this time. Ancillary service expense, over $19,000. Um, that uh, was a cost recovery that occurred, um, it's not a recovery actually, an additional expense from January, there was a, I believe it was a pharmaceutical bill that we received uh, recently that was incurred in January that needed to be paid. So that's why we see that negative variance there. Um, both repairs and maintenance are under uh, budget as we are working with all departments to control expenses. Um, purchase services, number six, over $94,000. Um, that actually was a legal settlement uh, incurred by TSJG uh, through an arbitration agreement uh, with a resident's family member. So that was a legal service expense um, for a settlement there. Utilities, number seven, was under budget by 16700 
travel under budget, again, all related to um, cost controls. Number nine, uh, their operating expense, you see that positive variance of $60,000. That was some bad debt recovery uh, from our village healthcare center. So as you know, that's a very volatile line item as we incur bad debt, we recover bad debt. Sometimes it takes us up to a year to recover bad debt um, as we advocate and work with um, insurance agencies to pay for the services rendered in our village healthcare center. So number 10 there, all in all, operating expenses were um, below budget, 96,000 for the month of April. So the TSJG operating margin for April had a positive variance of 73,000. Um, really proud of that number, shows strong expense control, especially given we had some major hits that we took in April um, in terms of that legal expense, et cetera. Again, wanted to offer a friendly reminder that our message boxes are up and running. So we will no longer be delivering um, information to uh, residents' doorsteps through uh, meal delivery. So we would ask that you come and check your message boxes uh, regularly, maybe once a week or, or twice a week. Again, if um, you need us to pick up your message box mail, uh, please contact us at the connect line at 4308216 and one of our team members will return it to you. As always, we, we ask that you honor physical distancing and wearing masks when you are collecting your message box items. We also want to continue to remind folks who are readily answering our phone that our, the phone system is, is not set up for caller ID, so an, I, that you would recognize it as a number from San Joaquin Gardens because all of our phone numbers start with 559-430-82 and then that individual's extension. So it, we will not show up as caller ID, so we are not spam and, and um, you can feel comfortable answering the phone if it begins with that extension. We want to recognize our upcoming May birthdays. So happy birthday to Ann Rumbaugh on May 19th, to Betty Bond on May 20th, to Bob Van Gelder on May 20th. So happy birthday to all of you for this week. We trust that you will have a wonderful celebration as we honor all of our May babies this week. So resident birthdays will be celebrated on the third Thursday each month with a special campus-wide lunch. So you're all invited. So this Thursday, May 21st, we will be celebrating a lot of birthdays. All of the birthdays for March, April, and May. Um, so all of the individuals who were born in March, April, or May will receive a special Zoom invite if they would so choose to participate in, and we can all dine together via Zoom and sing happy birthday to one another this Thursday, May 21st at 12 p.m. So those Zoom meeting invites were sent out already. If you did not receive them and you were born in March, April, or May, please contact Joe Hansen. A big reminder that the hunt for the gnome continues. So if you see the gnome, call the connect line at 430-8216 and you will be placed in the raffle. The gnome will be relocated every five Friday. Call in your sightings by 5 p.m. each Wednesday night. The winner will be drawn live by our very own president, Dennis, on Thursday during the TSJG Neighborhood News. And Phil Walker was last uh, week's recipient. And if you can make out that picture there, um, he received a cookie that had a picture of the gnome riding the turtle on it. It was very cute, very well done. So a big congratulations to Phil. We hope you enjoyed the cookie. And I hope you shared with Kathy too, because that's just the nice thing to do. Um, so keep on looking for that gnome, everyone. Up next, I want to introduce Cynthia Campa, our Director of Human Resources, who will walk you through um, her news for this resident forum. So Cynthia, take it away. All right, hi everybody. Um, I wanted to update um, you all with some of our new team members who have joined us in the past month. 
Um, they're all CNAs, and I, I wanted to introduce Destiny Martinez. She's our CNA in assisted living. Johanna Rivera, she's our newest CNA in our memory support. And then Jamila Jones, she's also our uh, newer CNA in our healthcare center. Um, so again, all of these three um, wonderful ladies, I just got to speak with them last week and they absolutely love, love San Joaquin Garden so far. Um, they've been with us for less than a month. Um, so I know it'll probably be hard to recognize them with wearing their masks, but if you happen to see them around campus, um, please introduce yourselves. Um, we also want to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, also let you know of some of our team members who have left San Joaquin Gardens and we wish them all the best. Um, in assisted living, Serenity Robertson and Karen Washington are no longer with us. In dining, we've had Allie Weirich, which some of you probably may know, she's worked in, in the bistro. Um, she is no longer with us. Um, in the healthcare center, we've had a few departures, Kathy Lee, Alizé Mejia, and Mykia Zhang. In home care, Megan Amon has left us. And in memory support, Rebecca Freshwater um, is no longer with us. Um, we will be continuing to recruit for these openings um, and we have them posted on our Human Good website. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, up next, we have a lodge and wellness update from Valerie. So take it away, Valerie. I don't know if Valerie's with us. Oh, I am. I was having technical difficulties, but hi, everybody. Um, we uh, just were added some photos of the Kona ice. Um, our residents enjoyed being able to come outside. They did social distancing and um, all, but they had a great time. Um, so that's just kind of some updates there of that day. That In the Grove, um, our residents have been working on this origami art and um, in, their, in each of their rooms and Patrick's been assisting them. And so uh, when they finished it up, they put it all together and made a, a photo for or a portrait for the lobby. So um, that was a collaborative effort from the Grove residents. That's really cool. That's cool. Yeah, kind of kept them busy. Uh, you know, we're trying to find things to keep people engaged and active. Thank you, Valerie. Elizabeth, are you online to provide activities update? I am. Hi everyone, um, I just wanted to report a job on steps, um, the step into fitness challenge. We just finished our first week and a big congratulations to Ruth Helmberg. She came in first place with 85,403 steps for the week. Lots of walking. Um, weeks are from Monday to Sunday night and steps can be submitted to aj at aj.casillo at humangood.org. So keep up the steps, good job everyone. Um, we have a new episode of the TSJG Trivia Show and that's airing throughout the week. Um, today there's a show at 5 p.m. and you can see resident Nancy Van Gelder versus Rob Wessler and we'll see who's going to come out on top. And on Monday, we will be celebrating Memorial Day. So throughout the day, we'll have uh, special videos dedicated to Memorial Day, and we'll be playing musical pieces performed by our local musician, um, who's played for us before at the Terraces by Chris Abejo. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I'll provide the training update. So first, I wanted to remind everybody about Strawberries and Cream Day, um, which will be this Wednesday, May 20th. Anna, are you on the line? Do you know what we're actually serving? Um, I am on the line. We are doing a... Um, a strawberry treat. It's going to be um, kind of like a parfait with some shortcake and it's going to be layered. It's going to be real pretty. Thanks. Oh, good. Okay, like a little trifle. Is that really a trifle? I think. Um, all right, so look for that on uh, this Wednesday, May 20th at your doorstep in the afternoon. We'll typically be delivering those around 1 ish between 1 and, and 2 or 2 30. Also, wanted to fill you in on um, our plan for unrestricted guidelines during COVID. So, right now we are in phase one, which um, is meal and grocery delivery only. So, this is the current phase that we're in, where all um, meals and groceries are being delivered. Phase two will be picking up grocery and meal options, um, and, and the meals will be served in Monte Carlo and Bistro, and of course, grocery will be in uh, Pete's Coffee and Grocery. So, we will be moving to this phase um, end of May, beginning of June. Uh, we're, we're waiting on a home office approval of the plan that we've submitted as infection control looks through everything, um, all of our guidelines. 
So, um, and that doesn't mean that we can't continue to deliver. So as we're in phase two, as a resident, if you um, aren't comfortable coming to pick up your meals, we can still deliver um, during that time. Phase three will be physical distancing, um, uh, physical distance dining in our restaurants, which will obviously require that we operate at less than normal capacity. So that's when we will need lots of um, planning and, and, and we'll have a lot of obviously staff involvement because we will need to potentially open additional venues for additional hours, which will require additional staffing. So as we look at our new normal, um, we'll, we'll talk more about what that'll look like, but that would be phase three. And then of course, phase four would be unrestricted access to our restaurants with no physical distancing needed. And it's just uh, the end of COVID would be during this phase and, and a phase for which I, I hope and pray a vaccine comes soon that we can get to. Um, so kind of wanted to walk you through that. Obviously we don't have a timeline for phase three or for phase four, um, but phase two, we're looking at um, happening by end of May or beginning of June. So I think a lot of you will be really excited about the ability to go back to picking up your meals to um, maybe beat Ruth Kallenberg in our steps, um, but also just to get out and to see people um, and have some normalcy return will be a really good thing uh, for this campus. So excited to announce that and look for more information regarding that on our um, upcoming episodes of the TSJG Neighborhood News. So Brian, are you on the line? And I know you have some things correlated to share. So um, are you ready to give your update, sir? I called you sir, so you're supposed to respond. Maybe you don't know that I'm talking to you because I'm being so polite. Brian, are you on the line? I am. Now I found the unmute button. Yeah, it's the same place it always is, just in it case. Just keep moving around on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's an update. So Speranza update, a um, couple pictures of an inside view of Speranza. You see that all the flooring is completed, um, carpets in, our, LV, our LVP is uh, laid, um, paint is done. Um, we're waiting on a few light fixtures and we'll be rehanging the art floor and then we'll be ready to go. Um, we've decided to hold off on the install of the salad bar um, in the interim so we can open up this um, if you want to point the mouse to the space that's going right there so we can have more available space for dining when we do um, open up the dining venue I'm um, gonna allow more tables and more uh, space to socially distance um, we've been working with the uh, manufacturer um, to figure out storage options um, so that when we're ready we'll be able to pull it out and have installed so in the meantime we're just gonna finish off that wall with tile um, do you want to add anything to that, Jessica? No, I just, I think it's an, an excellent idea. Um, uh, Puya brought us this idea. I don't know who it came from, Anna or who, but um, as we will need all the space we possibly can have to provide for served seating in Speranza, Speranza once we get to that phase three, um, it just made such good sense to not put the salad bar in. So um, again, we will still have that salad bar. We'll be storing that salad bar. Um, for when we get to the final phase and we are no longer talking about COVID all the time or worrying about COVID all the time, um, that is the goal to get back to that. But during this time, it'll allow for just that much more seating, um, which will be essential for physical distancing requirements. Um, we are continuing to remodel our assisted living apartments um, by creating larger access to the bathroom that you see on uh, your left, it was the original bathroom, and to your right is what the new remodel bathrooms look like with the expanded, expanded barn doors, allowing our residents and care partners to utilize the restroom uh, more efficiently and safely. Um, elevator update, we're excited about this. Um, we are getting ready to finish out phase two of the elevator modifications in Sequoia with elevators two and four. Uh, we'll begin that work on June 8th. Um, in the meantime, you see our cab interiors have arrived. Our pumps and motors will be arriving tomorrow in preparation. And all the pre-piping and alarm work are being completed as we speak. So we should minimize the uh, downtime on those elevators. Um, as we continue to prepare for the high temperatures of summer, our maintenance team will be uh, continuing with the inside air filter replacements. Um, Piazza residents, you can expect uh, to see Mitch coming around to do the interior fil filter replacements beginning tomorrow. Um, buildings and grounds is doing their part to keep our residents safe and we found this guy hanging around campus, I won't tell you where, 
Um, we gave him a stern warning and left him where he was at. So I hope you guys can go out and locate him also. You called security. I called security. They said he was harmless, so we let him be. <laughs> and coming to our security update, um, it's been a quiet time around campus um, as uh, we've had no major incidents to report. Um, but do remember that if anything comes up or you have any security concerns to contact security at 696-1910. Uh, that's 696-1910, um, 24 hours a day, and we will respond. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. So with that, we will go ahead and open it up to questions and comments. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And um, Michelle, if you want to stop recording.